This is H2O2 from H2O. And this is a small piece of my new electronic laboratory. So this little guy is what I call the PWM driver. Its version is uh, currently at uh, version 2.1.0. Now the PWM driver takes the uh, original zero fossil fuel V2 um, and the V2H and any clone of that, whether you made it yourself or if you bought it from somebody as a clone, and allows you to turn it into an H2O2 PWM version 2.1.5. So the first feature that it allows you to do is add the PWM driver chip to your circuit. Now the PWM driver chip um, takes that uh, that square wave that has the duty cycle on it and cleans up the, uh, the, the on time and off time of that square wave and significantly improves that time and what that ultimately gives you is a faster on time and off time uh, as your PWM uh, MOSFET is switching on and off. That improvement in time reduces the amount of heat generated uh, during that um, transition on and off because as it's transitioning, it uh, is actually uh, acting as a transistor um, and s slowly adjusting, slow, slow in terms of uh, MOSFETs. Um, it slowly adjusts the voltage uh, from the off to the on um, over that amount of time and therefore creates uh, uh, heat. So by turning it on faster, um, we reduce that amount of heat significantly. Okay, another bonus for using the uh, PWM, P, PWM driver uh, board is to, uh, it gives you the ability to run uh, more MOSFETs. Um, the circuit is designed to run two MOSFETs uh, per channel. Uh, there's a channel A and a channel B. I've run as much as four MOSFETs on um, just channel A. So in theory, um, we could run as many as eight without any problem. Okay, the next feature is the uh, duty cycle override. No matter what your um, current limit is set at, no matter what you've set your duty cycle adjustment on your pots, um, as soon as this is moved from the off position, which is just uh, hanging on one pin here, and you move it over and short these two together, duty cycle is now 100% guaranteed. The MOSFETs are being told to be on 100% of the time. So they are conducting full current. This allows you to uh, set your uh, cell current without worrying about uh, any of the effects of the PWM. Uh, you know that it's going to be on. Um, so setting peak current, or setting your cell current, uh, and adding your electrolyte slowly, letting it settle, uh, will have no uh, no, influ no external influences. Uh, as soon as you're done setting it up or you just want to do a quick what is my peak current test, um, just pop it back off and your cell rem resumes back to normal operation. It can be left off completely or it can just be hanging there off one pin. The third feature is an option where you, if you want to change um, your frequencies on your PWM. Uh, that was one of the first things I did when I started my original layout and found that um, that I couldn't uh, vary 
um, some of the components to alter frequency to lower or raise the frequency uh, beyond the normal 1 kilohertz to uh, 10 kilohertz range. Um, I kept running into a, a problem with the duty cycle. I couldn't control it. It would uh, it would cap out. It was, so I would get like no more than 60% duty cycle or 70% duty cycle um, when I started changing the frequencies. Okay, it will separate the sawtooth generator from the uh, comparator circuit, the current comparator circuit. Uh, and in doing this, it will stabilize the voltage um, for the comparator and keep it always um, at a midpoint that uh, it will allow your comparator to uh, function within its normal operating range. So that's it. Now we're uh, currently in the alpha stage. We'll get uh, prototype build up, uh, function tested on uh, Zero's original circuit, um, and then from there we enter uh, beta testing. So this is H2O2 from H2O, signing out.